Hey everybody, hope you're all doing really good. Today I'm going to be working on an iPhone 6s that was sent here for no backlight or no image or something. At first glance when I opened it up I did notice that we have what appears to be an aftermarket screen. We've got a little bit of a stamp down here. Now that's usually a big relief because it's often just a blown backlight filter and they are easy money baby. So having a look at the logic board I was thrilled to see that we have a nice toasty blown FL4211. So we do have a nice classic blown backlight short. And I'm thinking easy money, baby. Bring on the blown backlight filters, right? Right? But my joy was quick, quickly interrupted by this area of the board down here where you can see that somebody has raked off this image choke using some sort of a uh, pry tool or uh, something of the sort. So for everybody that criticizes me about my dainty little tiny little flat blade on my screwdriver, compared to these big old honking huge pry tools, I mean, just look at what we've got here, okay? Have a look at the pry tools that people use. See how big this is? Can you imagine what would happen if we stuck this under this connector right here and pried down with it? Where do you think that force is going to go. Does anybody have any clues? Huh? 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 So let's have a look at my tool. Now I'm going to insert my tool right here. Now it's not small by any means, but look at how much more control I can have over it. I mean, I can get right down in here and I'm not like prying down and up with it. I'm inserting it under the connector and then I lift straight up. So I, I just... I don't break anything with my metal screwdriver. Okay, so I reached a point where I decided that this one was probably going to suck and I decided I was going to do a video on it against my better judgment. So let's get started. The first thing to do is to take the board out nice and proper. All right, well that didn't take long. Let's go ahead and get this thing into a holder. There we are. Now, first what I'd like to do is just go ahead and fix this backlight filter. That's pretty well straightforward. All right, so let's get some hot air going. I'm going to set this at, oh, 230C with a pretty high hot airflow. 235C, airflow of 75. So with this low temperature, this is going to let me clean back our rubbery coating here. Now, I realize a lot of you watching this channel are far advanced, and you don't need me to explain all this crap as, to, you know, like why I'm warming this up, but... Uh, I don't know, I guess I could just sit here quiet. Yeah, maybe I should just sit here quiet. All right, so let's clean off this ruckus. I'm not going to sit here quiet. Those of you watching this channel already know that I'm positively not sitting here quiet. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I know we've got like just a little bit of a blob of a pad left there, and that's going to be okay. Let's get some flux in there. And I'm going to get me a blob of 6337 leaded solder on my tip. Such controversy over how we say solder. All right, this side's probably okay. Yeah, that's not looking too bad. We got us a nice pad left on that side. This side over here, we don't have a nice pad. We got this ugly, hard welded blob thing and if I sit here and I nitpick and I try to get that off of the board I will wind up damaging the board to the point where I'll have to pull the CPU shield and run a jumper all the way to BFE to get backlight working. So now that we've got that shined up okay let's grab us a brand spanking new backlight filter. I know better than to look away. Oh, there it is. We'll drop this right down in there like that. Let go of my tweezers, mofo. Come on, baby. I need that hair in there, too. Come on, get that hair in there. This backlight filter ain't going to work properly without a big old nice juicy hair. All right, so we're going to need a little more flux in there. That's not quite enough. All right, let's rotate this sucker. 
Now I know it's not going to be like symmetrical. I know you all like symmetrical things, but since we have such carnage going on on the uh, the hot side of this thing, we're not going to be able to make it symmetrical, and that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fudge this over to this side a little bit, over here toward our pad that's not all humped up, and I'm going to solder it on right there, like lopsided. I'm going to go ahead and tin up this side of this thing. There we go. All right, now the fun part. Let's get it down on the board. I remember this ain't going to be straight. It's not even going to be pretty. Ooh, baby. There we are. Nice and beautiful. We're pretty well obligated to do that. I mean, I can choose to put this thing on there crooked and like lopsided or run a wire all the way across the board under the shield and I just I mean come on it's we got a good connection right here like there it is it's there I'm staring at it life is good we just need to make a connection right now we're gonna solder to this nub down here this blobish looking It's just marvelous. Now, I'm going to go back over to the other side of it one more time. Let's see if I can get it to drop down a little bit more. I don't think it will. I think we're just about as good as it's going to get here for what we've got to work with. There we go. I don't like it that I scratched into the top of that filter there a little bit, but that is also going to be okay. Let's get some alcohol on it and queen, queen it up with a Q-tip, shall we? All right, so we're going to give it a little scrub, scrub, scrub. Yeah, I really try not to use hot air on these backlight jobs here when at all possible. Especially since whenever it's just act when it's really just a filter, it's pretty quick and painless to swap them out. Well, they're normally a mutated, melted blob of nothingness, but you can still swap it out. All right, we'll clean that up just a little bit more here in a little bit. I don't like this solder ball that I've left down here. In fact, I'm going to add a little more flux to that and nitpick. Gosh, why do I do this to myself? So that's looking pretty good, except for my uh, instrument fuzz laying around here. And we are going to take it. And also, I will secure this in place with green UV mask whenever I'm done too. So let's move right on over and have a look at our busted image choke. Now I've never had one busted like in this spot before. I know we've got a lot of missing pads and I believe two of them are only going to be accessible under the CPU. So let's take the one here that's not missing yet. I mean, we've got three out of four gone. And let's get this carnage out of here. I don't think I ever even seen the choke that used to be here. I looked at this one and decided, you know, I'm going to do this, this one on video. So I might have picked that up and thrown it away. <laughs> hey, look at that. We got a good pad. This is going to be easy. This technician done gone and left me a pad. All right, so let's clean it up all the way up and start getting prepped up to get some image signal coming through here. The component that is missing here... It's basically, it's sort of like a backlight filter, only it's two of them in parallel. And they're just side by side. And this is the final component before the display connector that gets the image signal from the CPU to the display connector. 
So what I'm really trying to say is without this component, you are completely screwed. You're not getting image. So if any of these lines going back to the CPU are inaccessible, we are completely screwed. I'm not getting an image. Unless you want to do like a board swap. And this one here is not for data. This, I believe this is repair, right? I'd have to look at the ticket. Either way, repair or data, we need this choke. Okay, I can see, right now, I can see where this one goes, right here, and I can see where this one goes, right here. We've got this little via down here that we can solder to. This one we don't have to worry about, because it's got a pad, right? But this one here, what is that going to? Okay. Well, in times like these, I'm going to turn to Paul Daniels's revolutionary software. Wait, can I say revolutionary? Let's have a look at FlexBoard View, and we're going to zoom in on the board. And just have a look at this little dude down here, shall we? Oh, look, we got an NC! Oh, for the love of God, thank you! So we don't have to worry about the little NC there, but we do... Wait a minute, that's not an image choke at all. Hmm, so this actually, oh Lord. I'm a jackass, hey, we're gonna fix the no image problem. Oh, I'm an idiot. The component we're working on here today, guys, has nothing to do with um, so much image. Uh, this is touch and proximity sensor, which we're gonna want it anyways, since this is going out to be a working phone. All right, so we can go from the resistor to this via and sort of use that to reinforce it. Um, the bottom left one here that's missing, that is this proximity TX enable pin and that is going ugh, over here to Q3104. Let's try not to have to deal with that because it looks like I got something that I can solder to. And then of course the center pad is going to be ground and since we don't have ground anywhere else here, we can pretty well safely assume that is going to be required. So can we solder? This bottom left one, what if we follow this right here? Which I think this is just going to be a via. It is. So we've got that one opened up. So now we got this one. This is going to be a breeze, right? <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and get our ground scratched back here. Okay. Now we're going to need just the tiniest little bit of jumper wire. And for this, I still like using my beloved iPhone ear speaker wire. It has never failed me. And it is also available in mass quantities for free. And I grabbed the extra hairy spool today, just since I'm making a video. All right, so let's get us a big old hunk of this. We want to be sure and pull off past the hair because um, we don't want to solder any hair. There we are. This stuff is actually a little bit smaller than human hair. All right, let's go ahead and get bent here. And I'm going to try to slip this down 
and solder it to that resistor so I can sort of use that to reinforce it. But first, this is magnet wire. This isn't like a bare piece of copper wire. This wire has like a enamel or, or rubbery coating on it. Gosh, this is the hairiest video I've ever done. So before we do this, we are going to want to tin the wire and get rid of that nasty coating. So I got a blob of solder on my micro pencil. I'm just going to sweep it. Oh, come on, you steaming pile of... All right, so I get a blob of solder here on my micro pencil. Clean off that coating. It looks like I'm shaking horribly bad, but I'm actually not today. I'm actually pretty still. We're just zoomed way, way in. All right, so that's looking pretty good now. So now my goal here is I'm going to try to get this wire to slip down in beside next to this little black resistor here. Like that. Oh. I reached for my iron and twitched. All right, let's just tack it to this resistor. <laughs> A little more flux. This thing's going to make me fight for my money. Yeah, at this point, I could turn this phone on and get image. I mean, I was supposed to look like a hero. All right, so that's where we're going to want this wire. It's just going to lay up here and, and coil up and form this pad. So now we need to fix these other ones. Actually, other uh, there's only two. There's this ground pad. And since I did a bunch of pinching on this wire, I'm going to cut it off. So there is this ground pad. There we are. My flux is starting to get sticky. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's not that beautiful. Quit overreacting. So that's going to be our ground pin. And I actually, I want to leave it long for now, but I need it out of my way. So I'm going to peel that back like that. Okay. Now we have one more to do. Okay, now we're going to need to do this without bumping the resistor wire there, or it's going to come right off. Like that. Mofo. Okay, there we go. We're going to leave that there. Let's see if we can get that resistor wire back in place. And also get it tacked down to the via how I had originally planned. Uh, 
There we go. Now my plan here was to get it down in, down in that hole and solder it in down there. I think I got it. I'm not for sure though. Okay, so that is pretty much <laughs> that is pretty much all the wires we need. Now I know it's kind of hard to look at the way it is, so we're going to clean it up a little bit. Now this was going to be pretty quick and easy, where we just I go, yay, image is working, but now this is a proximity sensor issue. But for the sake of the video and for the sake of this customer, I am going to replace this component even though they seem to have caused quite a bit of carnage here. All right, so we have to be really gentle cleaning this up. As you can imagine, all these wires I just soldered on are excruciatingly fragile and they don't like to be wiped around on with my hairy tools. So we're pretty much going to let the liquid do the work here. Oops and try to keep anything from getting caught because that would really suck all right we're almost there we need this just dry enough so that i can get some adhesive on it All right, we will take it. So let's take all these crazy looking wires now and turn them into pads, shall we? So I'm gonna start here, let's start with this one here. And I see it didn't stay soldered down. That's gonna be okay. We're gonna leave that just like it is. And I'm gonna start my coiling out here. Okay, there we go. That is going to form that pad. This one here, this is going to form our ground pad. Now, I should have started this more of an angle, like... I mean, I shouldn't have soldered this straight out here. I should have came into this via, or this uh, ground plane at an angle to make it easier for me to coil it up. But since I'm recording, I just, I sort of lose that train of thought. Okay, let's get this one coiled up. There we go, now we have us a nice ground. Now let's do our final wire over here. We're gonna go ahead and cut this off down here. Oops. There we go. And we will get this coiled up into a pad. Or something sort of close to it. And then whatever residue or whatever coating is left on this wire, we're going to scrape and burn it away. It is just marvelous. There we go. So this is pretty well usable. 
since this one on our top right, that is marked as an NC on Paul Daniels' life-changing software, I know that there is absolutely no way in hell his software could ever be wrong. I mean, it's, it's perfect. There's no bugs ever. No errors ever. He's like the world's greatest programmer. So we have this looking pretty nice. Now, the, the very next thing that I'm going to do here, this stuff right here, this mechanic, green UV mask, I do not know what life would be like if I had never discovered this stuff. This is like cement in a microscopic world. So we can take these teeny, tiny, tiny little components here that I've just repaired, and we can actually use this stuff to secure it in place. So to do this, I always use a Q-tip, or not a Q-tip, a toothpick. And then I use the tip of an X-Acto blade, which this one is pretty broken, it's dull. And then I just get a tiny little bit, I like dip it, sort of like a paint bucket, paint brush. And then we're gonna use this to secure all this carnage in place. So here's what I just dipped and got on my blade. We can just get a, a little bit over here. It's normally a little more runny than that. It's time to squeeze my tube and get some fresh stuff out of the end. Ugh, too much. So it really just takes baby little amounts of this stuff. I mean, even this tiny bit here is still too much. Oh yeah, baby, there we go. Jeez, that's excruciatingly sloppy, isn't it? Okay, there's that one. Now while we're at it, we're going to jog on up here to our backlight repair. And we're going to apply some mask here. In the early days of doing these, I did not mask this component, but I do now. I don't think this is really beneficial to mask this component. I just, you know, Apple sends them out with the glue on them. So I send them out with the glue on them as well. I, I really, if you ask me, hey, why do you insulate that? I mean, I really don't have a good answer for you other than, uh, well, because. So we've got our goofy little proximity sensor transistor thing, 1v8 touch, 1v8 EN con. What, what is, I don't even know what that thing is. Anyways, we've got this thing fixed. Now I'm going to use a UV lamp yeah, and cure up our glue. So we'll set this lamp right here on the board, just like that. And I'm going to go off and leave this thing for oh, maybe five or 10 minutes. Not very long. And drop that crema in there. Heck no, it don't have a floaty on it. This thing will sink to the bottom. Okay, we are back with this thing. Let's get the UV lamp out of the way. And let's just have a quick look under the microscope here and get this ready. So after the mask dries, it looks like that. And looks like this. So to get a component to sit on here, of course, we're not going to be able to solder to this glue. So we're going to need to just kind of scrape it back a little. There we go. And let's do our ground. There we go. 
So let's go ahead and tin up our pads. I'm going to add a little bit of flux. There we are. Now I'm going to add some leaded solder. I'm dipping my micro pencil in a little blob over here. That's not working. That'll work. That'll work. There we go. So it's really not clean at all. We've just got a huge blob of solder on it, on it, everything there. Now let's find a donor board. Let's see, I've got a pretty good selection laying up here. What is this one? Aha, that's an iPhone 6S, correct? Yes, it is. So that is the component that we are going to need. Now I wanna make sure I don't pick up any of this goo around it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of pick around it and make sure it's cleaned off. And also, I think this is pin one right here. I'm gonna scratch it a little with my blade just to make sure I don't lose track. I just put a little tiny mark in it right there. Okay, now we're gonna bump up the temperature here to something that will melt solder, lead-free solder. And grab us a donor. There we are. And I'm gonna tin the bottom of this component with leaded before we put it on the board. Just wanna make sure this thing sits down on there nice and pretty. Well, okay, it's not actually gonna be pretty, but it's gonna sit down on there by God. All right, so we want this to sit just like that. Like that. All right, let us go ahead and start warming this board up. I've now got my hot air set to 340 with an airflow of 40. And first I'm gonna to try to melt these crazy looking solder blobs I left on here. And I might change them a little bit if it doesn't look good enough. That's actually not bad. We could use a little bit more on this bottom right pad right down here. We're like that. Okay. So we'll add just a little more flux and we're gonna put this on the board. We will take it. It's definitely not pretty by any means, but it should work.
Now, what can we do to make sure this thing is going to work? Before I, I mean, I could just put it back in the housing and test it, right? Let's go ahead, let's check this thing in diode mode. If we have a look at Flexboard view, let's say, uh, let's start with this pin here. Let's test this touch to proximity enable L, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Let's just check pin one, two, three, four, five. The sixth one up on that connector on the right hand side. I'm gonna do red probe on ground and I'm gonna use my black probe to do the probing and we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm hoping for like a point three, point two. I don't think it's getting a connection. Get a 0.44 at the resistor, and then at the connector I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm not getting anything at the connector. Is that right? Maybe I was touching this clock line instead. Let's check that resistor again. A 0.44 so I'm definitely getting a different reading on that resistor than I'm getting at the connector which means we are not getting a connection to the connector so let's just check here on the connector one two three four five six I should have a connection from here at the connector to this resistor down here and I do not I'm getting open line all right so we know that one's not working now next let's go ahead let's check the bottom left one here and we can test that up here at R3140 which should be this one right okay so we're gonna check diode motor ground here on R3140 I think that's what that is. We're getting ground on that side, so that must not be what it is. That must mean that I'm on this resistor below it. So let's go to the next one up. And it looks like there's a space. Right, there is. So that means this one should be the guy right here. Let's see what we're getting on this one. We're going to get a 0.5. That is actually acceptable. And then the only other pin that we could be worried about would be this bottom right one, this 1V8 touch, which we're not really going to be able to use diode mode to narrow that down. I think what's happened is underneath this pad, remember how I tried to solder the wire to that via and it popped loose, it didn't stay on there? That via is going to be our pathway back to the connector. And then I bet you there should have been... You know, maybe I overlooked a uh, trace that goes from R4240 to pin 2 here. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to deal with taking this thing back up because I could potentially, like, screw up my jumpers. and I don't really have to. I'm going to run a wire from R4240 right up here to this pin on the connector. And that should take care of our little broken circuit problem, right? All right, so without skipping a beat, we'll grab our jumper wire. Rats! It's the hairiest spool in all of micro soldering land. It's actually not going to be as easy as I thought because of some angle. Got some angle issues here for sure. Okay, so now that I've got that tinned, well, let's try to come in from the bottom and then fold it back, shall we?
Okay, we're going to take it. Here we go. Watch me twitch and melt the connector. That's what that's what should happen since I'm recording. Ooh, baby. That actually looks really good. Now we're going to trim it off. Check that diode mode reading once more, shall we? We'll go ahead and put our red probe on ground. We actually know we're going to get a good reading this time. Because, I, I mean, how could it not? I mean, this has to get a good reading, right? Red probe on ground. Black probe on our little pin thingy. And now we're getting a 0.29. That is an acceptable reading. Now, I'm pretty sure that this thing is going to work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. All right, and let's see if we got a passcode here because I'm going to want to test that proximity sensor. Let's see, here's the original. I have a passcode. All right, now before I get too far ahead of myself here, let me slap a screen on this thing and see if we get backlight. Slip it right back in the housing it belongs in. Let's use the customer's screen, making absolutely sure we don't have a short right here where the backlight solder joints are. I have one more little piece of goop here in the home button connector. If the backlight circuit's good, if the screen assembly's good, we'll get working backlight. And if the screen assembly has the proximity sensor good and all lined up and everything is just, every last thing is perfect, we'll have a working proximity sensor. All right, let's get the power supply on the screen. We'll turn the power supply on. We're drawing nothing. That's a good sign. I'm going to press the button to boot in one, two, three. Boot. 100 milliamps. Apple logo. Yes, work is done. Yes. Proximity sensor. How about that? All right, it just looped, but that's likely from me screwing around with my cables. So now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hook up their dock flex, their battery, and I'm gonna boot this thing on a charger. All right, we're drawing 850 milliamps of charging current, which isn't, uh, isn't you know, great, but it's good. It's gonna be acceptable right now. All right, I'm gonna let this thing charge until it comes up on its own free will. We're gonna test the proximity sensor and um, hopefully everything works. Ooh, we're at 900 milliamps, almost 910 milliamps. I'm starting to get excited. All right, we are back with this thing. It is back up and running. However, this is one of these phones that don't have the Voice Memos app installed, and uh, I'm not sure. It might have an iOS version where the Voice Memos, Memos app does not let you test the proximity sensor. So to test this thing, I'm going to have to get like a SIM card in it and make a phone call. Um, so what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go ahead and get it put back together. So I will remove the screen assembly from it, put all the screws back in it, hook up the antenna cable. There we go. 
Let's do our bottom antenna cable. I always connect these using the microscope. Hmm, okay. Well, after this phone had the board cranked down into the housing, we are now in a situation where it is uh, looping. Dang, I can't even test. I want to go back in and use UV mask and put my wire down on the board and make this permanent, but I can't even test this until it boots. So, um... All right, I have got this thing back up and running. I wound up figuring out that without the front flex cable hooked up, it would not boot loop, but also sometimes with the front flex cable hooked up, it would also not boot loop. Here's what I found. The wire that I soldered on from this resistor down here, I ran this wire from R4220 up to pin 34 on the display connector, but I had left that wire laying across the pins here, and I believe what had happened is we were actually getting a connection between 34 and pin 36 here. So we were actually taking like 1.8 volts or whatever and hooking it straight to I2C2, which caused some really, really screwy deadline issues. So. I have this thing up and running, and now I'm going to test the proximity sensor and get this repair finished. So this phone doesn't have the voice memos app, and I do not have a SIM card that'll work with it, but we can use Siri, and it is working flawlessly. All right, so we're just gonna take some of this mask here. And I want, oops, I don't wanna get it on the connector, but I wanna make sure we do get it on the pins. I want to make sure that wire stays the heck off of those pins. It is insulated, but I think what had happened is I'd actually melted through the coating right up against that I2C2 pin. Because I cleared that wire back and no more reboots. There we are, we're gonna leave it just like that. And just like before, we'll grab our UV Lamparini. Put it right there on the board. Um, so let's let this cure up and I will be back in a moment. So here's what that looks like all cured up. It's not the prettiest repair in the world, but it is a repair and it should be fairly well stable and then up here we've got the uh, repair to the backlight circuit which is also not pretty and uh, now I'll put the phone back together all right I have this phone fully reassembled the component that I repaired other than backlight U4240 this is for the proximity sensor however I'm not entirely sure if without this we would have a non-working proximity sensor 
or if without that we would also have issues with touch. I've actually never tested that before, so um, feel free to let me know what you think in the comments below. Anyways guys, that is going to be the end of this video. I really want to say thank you to everybody that has helped support this channel on uh, Patreon through YouTube memberships. I've had people sending PayPal donations and then also last month there was somebody that sent a Bitcoin donation and I'm sincerely sorry I, I didn't notice it because it came to a wallet that I don't check all that often. So anyways, guys, I really thank you for watching. If you like my video, please give me a big thumbs up and I will see you soon. Have a good day, everybody. Yeah, that looks like you're peeing. Definitely.